Alright, color, just footprints go. White. So in between there, we can uh, have have our little footprints, so Hey there, so now that uh, we have a character that can walk around the screen, one of the things that, since we added mud puddles um, last, last a little while ago, uh, we want to be able to maybe make the, our interaction a little more realistic. Um, so what we're going to do is make the character have uh, footprints right after he walks out of the, out of the, out of the mud. So um, I went ahead and created a sprite, and it's really small, um, since we're still on small sprites. Uh, I created a two by two brown spot. Nothing real exciting there. So what we're going to do is I created, I'm going to create an object that is the footprint oh. and assign our, our footprint. And our create, we're going to create it and give it a lifespan. So how long is it going to live? Um, we're going to call it death steps. Yeah. We're going to give it a range. So we're going to do. Uh, we're always going to use room speed, and that'll give us the value of basically that's the equivalent of one second. A room speed is the number of steps. In the room. So if we change our room to be 60, 60 steps, then it's 60 times this will go through. We won't have to change it in the future. We can uh, adjust appropriately. So if you ever see me do uh, picking durations, it'll be basically be based on room speed. And so we're going to take a, let's say, five and a half seconds to eight seconds. I don't know. We, we can adjust this later. So we're just going to kind of simulate the drying, drying rate of our mud. So now we're going to add a step. Oh yeah, and then we're going to go ahead and do, this is max dust steps. And we're going to make it the value. This way we can basically make them fade. So we're going to image alpha so death steps. So decrement our death steps. Our image alpha will be we're going to uh, basically go from 100 down to 1 depending on the rate. And then we'll go ahead and throw it in here if if we've gotten down to our last one, we're going to uh, get rid of the footprint. So this will just, whenever we create one, it'll it will um, count down and disappear. Oh, we also need to make sure. No, this is going to be on the, on the ground, so we don't change the alpha for it. I mean the depth of it. So that's the move. Okay, so now we're going to go to our boy. And we're going to create a couple of variables here. Uh, I'm going to say trail equals false. So he's not actually leaving a trail. Uh, we're going to create a trail duration. Uh, that's pretty much how many iterations we're going to go through and a trail count. We'll just, when we initialize these, we'll just set them to the same. So we'll leave that open so we have can remember what it is. So if we actually, we want to check to see if he has collided with a ground rate. Doesn't matter which type it is, uh, we're just going to check every time the collision occurs. And if um, we had created a mud type before, so we're only going to do anything special if it's mud. And we're just, our, let's see, 
this point we're just going to go over here and do the same thing initialize his trail and then so every step if um, he's doing the trail and if the type is mod we'll do something so let's see what we're going to do uh, we're going to create a footprint at his feet Alright, so one of the other things we want to do is trail rate. We want to set it to 4. I think that's so every other time. And then uh, we're going to add some variables. Probably too many, but that's right. Okay. So what we're doing here is <coughs> trail side. So when you're taking steps, it's going to alternate which side of the character it's on. Um, so right and left side, and then we'll just do the trail side. That way we're alternating it. It gives a little bit of more of appearance of... And it's really only going to do this for right and left when we're going up and down the screen. Um, when we're going right, it's not going to be as, as obvious. Um, you could code additional logic for that. And what we're also going to do is trail rate. Make this a little bit longer. Okay, so what we're doing here is we don't want it to every step we don't want every step to create a new uh, an, a new footprint. We only want to do it every so many frames. So we're going to create a, a frame rate, basically the trail rate. Um, once we get to zero, we're going to do this. Um, we're going to reduce the trail duration. And if the trail duration is over, we are going to say trail equals false. So we are no longer leaving a trail. So here we've got trail duration. Type is mud. Oh, I forgot to set this trail type. So we don't know what we're touching until we hit it. So if the other thing we're touching is mud, we're going to set it to be mud. I guess we don't even really need to do that. So we're going to start our, our trail, set the type, and this will control whether we actually leave a trail. So if the trail exists, we'll only do it for so long, um, and we'll only do it for so long with the trail duration, and figure out which side it's on, and only leave things if it's mud. So let's try it. So we're going to touch, walk through the mud. All right, he's not doing anything. So we got to figure out what we're doing wrong. All right. So we have hit our ground. The mud. Make sure the mud has a type. It's mud. Oh, the other thing that we didn't say is he's not leaving a trail. Tell him he is doing, leaving a trail. All right, so the type is not set. Trail type, is that right? Yep, there we go, let's try that. Yeah, there we go. So now he walks, when you're walking through, he's gonna, I have it <coughs> set for the collision of his head, so we need, probably need to change that. Yeah, so we need to change that real quick. Actually, we'll make it more precise. So let's get rid of this one here. Because we really do precise collision detection here. 
So at the ground rate, so we've hit something. Now we're walking through it and we'll, all right, what did I do wrong? Oh, the other. Since I'm not in col I am not in a collision object, so other doesn't make sense. So to use my collision detection here. All right, so he's doing all right there. Trail count, trail duration. Oh, let's see. Tra I'm not resetting my trail duration. Trail count. All right. So the only way he's walking here. Oh, let's switch this around. He'll always leave. Have a count of twenty. Yeah, there we go. So now he walks around. It's probably a little long for it. Well, we can adjust how, how many steps he has. But yeah, there you go. There's a trail walking around. Um, have fun with that. So as a final step to uh, making these footprints work a, a, little, a lot better, what we're going to do is uh, change it to be a lot more generic and just change color. So what we're going to do is go back to our our sprite footprint, um, make it um, just a white, so we can change it on the fly of the color. I'm going to go to our mud footprint and just make it a footprint, and then create. And we're going to check create a step color. For right now, we'll just make it red. We're going to create a draw event. And just do the generic, everything that I would normally do. Oh, we actually want to make this the image alpha because we changed that elsewhere. It's so really the only thing we're overriding with something else is the color. So as the step goes, the image, change, image alpha changes. And then we go back to our character. And when they walk through, instead of creating specific mud footprint, we're just going to create a footprint. And assign it to an object that we can change the va variables for later. So we're going to change the step color. Um, make it a brown And then we also have ice out there, so we'll just do that for right now. For if it's ice, we'll make it like a blue. So this way we can uh, go around and uh, with very little change, just with the type, have generic color. The footprints go white. So in between there. We can uh, have have our little footprints, so works out pretty well. So until next time, good luck coding. Thanks. So it's, uh,